man, y'all gonna laugh at me. The internet's gonna laugh at me, but bro, Jesus came into my mind. God, oh. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Did Logan Paul just look to Jesus to find forgiveness? This is really interesting. Over the last few months, there has been a big dramatic buildup to a fight between Logan Paul and Dylan Danis. There's been names, insults, and accusations thrown back both ways. But what caught people's attention was Dylan Danis's unrelenting attacks on Logan Paul's fiance. How could any person watch what he did to the person you love most in the world and be okay with it and not want to actually this human being. The fight happened over the weekend and Logan ended up being victorious. But the very next day, Logan drops a podcast and in it, he talks about what he believes was the key to his victory. This is really interesting. Be sure to stay tuned to the last clip where Logan shares his gripes about Christianity. I do think it's a shame that the scripture says homosexuality is a sin. Do think it's a shame that the scripture says worshiping any other deity than Jesus is a sin. I don't agree with that. In the beginning of the fight, you said, I forgive you, Dylan. That shit was hard. But did you mean that? Did you actually, like, mentally tell yourself, I'm going to forgive this guy, or are you just fucking put on a show? So the major challenge for me in this fight, as we knew, was that this guy got under my skin. How, how could he not? How could any person watch what he did to the person you love most in the world and be okay with it and not want to actually murder this human being? But as I just described, I'm not that type of athlete. I'm not that type of person. When I lead with aggression and I'm fighting with emotion, I'm not in my best state. And when we did that face-to-face -face with the glass, he's standing across from me and I learned that he riles me up. He brings out that side of me that, that goes, I want to kill this guy. And that that's not good. It's Have not you tried that though? I, I try, but then I just look stupid throwing wild punches and, 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 and then I get, then I get caught. I, I'd get caught with something and I, and, you know, he gets that knockout that the world was waiting for and it didn't happen. Like it just, the story w was not meant to be written that way. Me and Nina sat right, right over there. We had a meditation and in this meditation, I'm sitting here and go, how, how can I go into this as calm as possible and not want to fight with the emotion? And this word kept coming to my mind, forgiveness, forgiveness forgiveness and then I man y'all gonna laugh at me the internet's gonna laugh at me but bro jesus came into my mind let's god i swear to god <laughs> yeah oh, let's go i swear to god dude i was like i was like jesus is like the the, the man who has master forgiveness the power of forgiveness a whole religion was built on the power of forgiveness like the wow. amount of followers he has because of this one principle that if you can grasp it and it's hard to grasp you know how hard it was for me to go i forgive you bro i forgive you for making my life hell i forgive you for hurting the person i love most in this world for months on end when she's done nothing to you but i knew that if i could do it and i knew that if i meant that i actually forgave him i could enter this fight with a calm mind and just box okay a couple quick thoughts here is jesus the spokesman of forgiveness and he's the greatest example of forgiveness absolutely but it's not just because jesus was this nice guy walking around the middle east two thousand years ago saying i forgive you i forgive you i forgive you no his greatest example of forgiveness was that on the cross that's the picture that is the gospel the good news that we are forgiven for our sin not because god was just like okay you can get off scot-free go go about your business but because he sacrificed himself in our place so i don't want logan to just you know look to jesus because he's this forgiving nice guy i want him to see this ultimate example of the gospel of forgiveness i see logan looking to god very pragmatically right so he's looking to god god give me some of your stuff give me some of your peace give me some of your forgiveness give me some of your joy give me some of your happiness like he's looking to god to give him the gifts that he wants but he doesn't really truly want who God is. Now, maybe there's an element for Logan, and I've seen this from other sports stars and things like that, where they'll look to God to give them a win. Or like, I'm going to look to God and I'm going to hope that he makes my dreams come true. God, help me pass this test and I'll really believe in you. Help me win this boxing match and I'll really believe in you. Help me get this job and, and I'll really, really trust you and I'll know that you're there and I'll never forget that. Now, maybe you think that request isn't that big a deal, but then you look in the Bible and see what Jesus was saying to the people that were seeking 
a sign. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Now stick with me, guys. What is the sign of Jonah? Jonah was in the big fish for three days and then he came out. This is a picture of Jesus in the grave for three days, rising again on the third day. And so what is the picture? What is the sign that he is going to give these people? It's going to be of his resurrection. It's the gospel. And that's the sign that he gives us today. He says, okay, stop looking for all these signs everywhere else, right? Stop looking for these signs everywhere else because it's clear and it's simple. I've shown it to you. I've revealed myself to you on the cross and in my resurrection, proving to you that I am the Messiah, that I am God. So Logan doesn't need additional signs or to win a boxing match. And I don't need to get that job or get that extra bonus in order to know that God is truly present. No, God has already revealed himself on the cross. He's revealed himself through his word. He's revealed himself in the gospel, the good news of the gospel, that I can be forgiven and I can know him. Now, for some of you who have been following some of this controversy for a while, you know this isn't Logan's first time dipping his toes in religion and Christianity. Actually, at one point, he really went after one of his former co-hosts, George Janko, about his Christian faith. And he was really angry about it. And he said, you know, you all bunch of homophobes and bigots and you believe bigoted things. And people were not happy about that. Even non-Christians thought that he really went overboard. And so Logan came back with this apology. But in this apology, he explains some of the things that he still has a problem with Christianity. So let's watch and then we'll see what the Bible has to say about it. From the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. I appreciate that. My attitude towards you on that episode and my belittlement of your beliefs was not appropriate at all. Uh, not as a podcast host, especially not as a friend. Every Christian I know, pretty much, is incredibly warm, loving, accepting, and forgiving, including my devout mother. And I also recognize that it's a source of so much hope and purpose for people, and it was wrong to be dismissive of that. I do think it's a shame that the scripture says homosexuality is a sin. I don't agree with that. Yes, I do think it's a shame that the scripture says worshiping any other deity than Jesus is a sin. I don't agree with that. As you know, I also... Um, don't believe it's an incredibly progressive practice to deny scientific evidence and evolution in favor of creationism. And I have a right to believe what I believe, mm -hmm. which again, as you know, is in a God, mm. like a, a higher power, universal energy, creator, whatever you want to call it. And, and, and while the God that I believe in might not be the same as yours or Mike's or anyone in this room, <clears throat> the point is we all believe something. And no matter how much conviction as individuals we have that our truth is the truth at the end of the day nobody knows so logan has some pretty clear gripes about christianity and i'm not here to say that he's misunderstanding the bible i'm not here to say that oh no actually homosexuality isn't a sin or jesus isn't the only way because he is and while some hold to an old earth perspective i don't believe that's biblical if you read the scripture as it's laid out if you understand adam and eve and their significance as real human beings when they were alive in that connection to jesus then I believe, yeah, it was six days, so I'm not going to argue with him on that. But what I see going on, and this is not uncommon with other celebrities, is an editable Bible. Is to somebody to say, I really like Jesus and what he stands for. He is loving and he is gracious and he is amazing and he is wonderful and forgiving, but I don't like the rest of the Bible. I really don't like that. But the truth is you can't separate Jesus from the rest of the Bible. You can't separate the God of the New Testament from the God of the Old Testament. In the scripture, it says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the first clip, Logan talked about how he looked to Jesus to find this forgiveness for this person who had really done him wrong and done his fiance wrong in a real way. But what you need to understand is that you can't really understand forgiveness unless you understand sin, right? Because if there's nothing, if there's no sin, then there's nothing to forgive. And we just don't like God's definition of sin. See, Logan is easy. It's easy for Logan to look at this Dylan Danis guy and say, like, this guy has sinned. This guy has hurt me. He's hurt my fiance. This is wrong. But when he looks at other aspects of the Bible and what the Bible calls sin, he has a problem with God's standard. This comes down to the fact that we believe that our morality, our wisdom, our knowledge, our 
beliefs, our reasoning, they're all higher than God's. This is what 1 Corinthians says, and this has direct application here, so pay attention. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. People that are perishing have yet to have their eyes open and they see the cross as falling. It doesn't make sense to them. And they see God's ways and his wisdom and his morality. They see it as dumb. Hone into this next part in 1 Corinthians with me. But God shows what is foolish in the sight of the world to bring shame to the wise. God shows what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Here's the big picture point. We need to humble ourselves before God. We need to stop looking to him just to get his stuff and recognize what he has done on our behalf on the cross. Believing in a God is not enough. Believing that Jesus was a cool guy is not enough today. God is calling all of us to repent of our sin and put our faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's my prayer for Logan. He has been back and forth and back and forth on his perspective of Christianity, but I pray that God would continue to work on his heart and soften his heart and show him that he's not the ultimate authority here, that he needs to submit himself to God. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and enjoyed this content in general, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. I want to give a huge shout out to my other YouTube channel, Men on Mission. We just hit 20,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all of you guys who have been over there and watch the content on that channel. It is such a like a passion project of mine. And so if you're a man, head over there. I know some women watch the channel. That's not completely not allowed, but you know, it is targeted towards men. So you, you pick and choose what you'd like to watch. Anyway, thanks for watching again. Thanks to everyone on Patreon. You enable me to keep doing what I'm doing. You're a huge blessing. God bless.